Here's the anchor verse for week one of Peace on Earth. It is found in 2 Thessalonians. That's a fun word, Thessalonians. Chapter three, verse 16. This is what it says. Now may the Lord of peace. Now this entire verse is loaded with promises. Now, the, now may the Lord of peace himself, not his B string, not the C string, not the Linda's having a crisis again, send Gabriel down there to help her. No, may the Lord of peace himself give you what? His peace. I love this. At how often? All times, y'all. In that waiting room, in the doctor appointment, in that fight, in that marriage, in that what are we going to do? How are we going to pay our bills? No, may the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at all times in every situation. The Lord be with you all. Can we give God praise for the reading of his word? What a great promise. If you're taking down notes, which I encourage you to weekly, title one or title for week one of peace on earth is there is peace available for every season. This isn't just peace for the low moments. This isn't just peace in the holidays. No, there is peace available to every single one of us in every single season. Come on, let's pray. Father, give us ears to hear you, a mind sharp and ready to understand. God, we all need a deposit. Suicide ideology is way up. Anxiety is way up. Panic attacks are way up. Brokenness, frustration in this season is way up. We need Jesus, you, the peace giver yourself. God, we need you to show up and we need to deposit today in this house we all receive it. If you receive it, shout amen. amen. Now, for some of us, the season is joyful. It's full of hope. Man, we've had, how many of y'all enjoyed Thanksgiving? Come on, how many of y'all enjoyed Thanksgiving a little too much? Or like, it's a lot of heavy whipping cream in Turkey, amen? I was talking to my brother the other day. And he was like, yeah, this guy that works with him, he's like, yeah, I feel like I'm, I feel heavy right now. And my brother's like, you, you literally ate six premium pounds of turkey. And Dave's like, you know, it's weird. Like, heaviness kind of, why does heaviness run in our family? I was like, because nobody runs in our family. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous, but it's true. But the truth is this season brings out all the feels. It can feel overwhelming. It can feel like it's full of stress and anxiety. But this is also linked to a spirit. Like, I talk about this a lot in leadership, that weight is responsibility. Like, I have a weight, the weight of responsibility to be a good husband, to stay in covenant. I have a weight of responsibility to, to, to raise up my kids to go the right path. I have a weight of responsibility to lead this church according to the voice of the Holy Spirit directive. The weight of responsibility is actually a good thing. Heaviness is a spirit. I'm not talking about all the desserts and too much salt in your diet. I'm talking about that heaviness. How many of y'all have ever just felt heavy? Just like, man, when it rains, it pours. It's Monday. I'm frustrated. All that bills do. Does that come every two days? How come I have to pay that all the time? Heaviness in the appearance of just this, ah, this low place. Heaviness is a spirit. Isaiah chapter 61 verse three says, this is how you combat the spirit of heaviness. What? How? How, Pastor Daniel? According to the word, we do it by putting on the garment of praise. So that's why I want to go back again and invite you back out December 29th to the night of worship. And we're going to lay down some heaviness. We're not going to drag the residue of where we've been, good or bad, into where God has taken us next. Come on, that's, I'm excited. I hope you're excited. So wherever you find yourself today, we're going to be talking about, a, we're going to be talking about peace. The whole series is around peace, but not just any peace, but the peace of God that sustains us through this season and your next season. It got you through the past. You're still standing, by the way. There's peace that we have access to right now and peace in the next. So, so the question is asked a lot, specifically in Christianity, specifically in Protestant faith that we believe, is what is true peace? But what is, Pastor Dana, what is true peace? Peace is actually a really big deal. According to the Bible, the word peace is mentioned 300 329 different times between the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's super clear when you're reading the word 
The peace is a very big deal. It's also part of God's promises for his people. Come on, somebody say out loud, I'm his people. Come on. In this world, the longer you're in this world, the more you recognize that we're in this world, but we're not of it. Some of y'all are like, yeah, but I get that, but I also have to pay my rent. (laughs) And I get that. And here's the truth. There is a peace that we can have access to off and on, but the peace that we access of the earth and of the world is only temporary. So I finished my to-do list, a little bit of peace. Cleared out all of my inbox on my emails. Come on, how many of y'all that brings a little bit of peace? I did not respond to that uh, (laughs) irritating, antagonistic text. Come on, that brings you a little bit of peace. I decided to swipe, block it, and delete. Come on, some of y'all need it. That was a whole word for you. (laughs) Brings you a little bit of peace. We cleaned up as a family all the Thanksgiving stuff, and the kitchen was spotless. I went to bed like this. (laughs) A little bit of peace. A drive with the windows down. A break from the 300 degree weather. Come on, a little bit of peace. But I need you to hear this. Peace is not the absence of problems. It's not something that we can manufacture on our own. You can't buy this type of peace on Amazon. You can get most things on Amazon. You can't Google this type of peace. How do I find peace? They're like, go on a Disney cruise. You're like, no way. <laughs> no, no, we can find short-lived moments of peace. Edwin, are you back there? Or am I gonna have to do this on my own? In three, two, one. Okay, it's me. So Edwin over here, for those of you who are musicians, uh, I, there he is. Give it up for Edwin. There he is. So Edwin is our MD here, music director here at uh, West Houston. He's a smooth operator. All right, so when he plays, now don't play anything yet, there's a pedal down here called a sustain pedal. If Edwin forgoes that and says, I'm not going to use that today, Pastor Daniel, and he just plays one note, it sounds like this. Wow. It's extremely moving. Some of you are like, oh, Jesus, please. Thank you. Hit it again. Throw up my hands. Praise you. Now, it's, it's boring, right? That's called a staccato note. It's short-lived. Play it again. It's short-lived. It's flickering. It's fleeting. And then it's over. It starts and it ends. This is how most of us live our lives when it comes to peace. Ah, oh, paid off some of that debt. I got a little bit of peace. I checked every box on my to-do list, a little bit of peace. Come on, somebody. But this is the way we live. And then we just kind of blow with the wind. Everything is short-lived. Now, staccato notes, when they're played in sequence with like a string quartet, oh, they sound awesome. It's dun, 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 dun. And then we, and then y'all put a rap over it, and it sounds amazing. Staccato notes are great. But not when it comes to peace. Short-lived, flickering, fleeting moments of peace will never sustain you. But there is a pedal. I'm glad we're talking about sustain because there's a pedal down here. If you're a musician, you already know. If you have no clue about music and you're a shower singer and you're like, but I think I'm good, but you're the only one that thinks that. Uh, This is called a sustain pedal. So the exact same note that Edwin was playing a moment ago that was a staccato note, when he presses the the sustain, sustain pedal, this is what it sounds like. Just carries out. Just hit that one note. Now the, the lower one. Thank you. <laughs> and I was like, my little brother. But that one note, and it, it just, it, it carries out. It's moving. It'll move the atmosphere. It'll, it'll move the room. God never intended for us to live a life with short-lived, flickering, fleeting, fragmented moments of peace. No, he wants us to have a sustaining peace, a peace that runs through the valleys, a peace that, that's with us in the mountaintop moments. It's in the losses and the wins, a peace that helps us in the middle of that. Well, sir, you're diagnosed with this. A, a peace that is in the middle of that marriage issue, a peace that's in the middle of that. My baby did what? The addictive issues, whatever it is that you're walking through, we have a peace that's available to us that's sustaining. Come on, how many of y'all want that type of peace? 
Thank you. Give it up for Edwin. He's the man. My dude. Jesus offers an eternal peace when the world can only offer a temporary solution. In biblical peace, I need you to grab this. Biblical peace is a gift. How many of y'all are grateful? Like it's, it's the holiday season. You're like, I'm going to get some gifts. Okay. <laughs> Wave at me. Come on. How many of y'all like getting gifts? Okay. How many of y'all like giving gifts? Okay, great. Now I'm going to go back because there's a lot of people that were lying. How many of y'all like to get gifts? Like you're like, see, that's a little bit better. Okay. You know, my birthday is December 11th. I'm just saying to you publicly. Uh, it is December 11th. And uh, I love to give gifts, <laughs> but I do like to get a couple gifts. Amen. And, and Pastor Jackie, she's amazing at gift giving. Like if I have whispered it in the still, the stillness of my time with the Lord, like, so much this is well. <laughs> the Lord speaks it to her and she has it for me. Like it's crazy. Y'all get you a girl that can hear from the Holy Spirit. Mm. Amen. And she's pretty. Okay. But biblical peace, y'all, is a gift. It's a gift that's sustaining, and it cre creates a deep sense of wholeness and a calm, a calm, C-A-L-M, a calm that comes only from God. It's a gift. John 14, 27 says it this way, so you don't think it's my opinion. I'm leaving you with a gift. What are you leaving us with? A gift of peace, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is the gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled and don't be afraid. The Bible again shows us in Isaiah 9, 6, where Jesus is a gift. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the peace, the gift from God that gives, that gave us ultimately through his sacrifice, eternal life and peace is also y'all part of the fruit of the spirit, which I love. Galatians chapter five, verse 22 and 23. Peace is the third piece of fruit in this, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Joy, say it out loud. Peace. Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, which a lot of y'all need. Amen. Peace is one of the fruit of the Spirit. So if you don't have peace, I need you to, con I need you to check your connection to the vine. Because John 15 talks about how he's the vine and we're the branches. If we remain in him and him through us, we will bear how much? Much fruit. What will you bear? You'll bear love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Peace is something, though, that grows in us as we get closer with and walk with the Lord. Now, let me let you in on a little bit of a personal moment that happened uh, to me uh, last week. I asked Fox, I said, Fox, why don't you, just you and me, buddy, like he's a mama's boy. Like if if, if y'all are ever around us and I say, hey, Fox, whose boy are you? He's like, not yours. I'm mama's boy. Like every time, every single time. So I said, buddy, do you want to go on a little drive with me? I was going to run a couple errands. And he was like, mama, is that okay? And she's like, it's okay. You're still my boy. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like he's, he's my kid too. So we get in my truck. We're having a good time. And then she said, I hear, bling, I hear an alert. And I look down. She has sent me uh, a pretty significant ingredients list that's still needed for Thanksgiving. Now we're, we're two days out. And I'm like, girl, get your affairs in order. Amen. <laughs> now it was a couple of things she thought we had and we didn't. It was not that big of a deal. And then she kept adding another one, adding another thing. So Fox and I walk into what should have been a, maybe a 45 to 30 second encounter to about 30, 45 minutes. I mean, I'm digging through things for that. I didn't even know were invented. Like I'm like, do they only make this in England? She's like, it's there. Just look for it. So now let me, I'm giving you pearls here. If you're at the grocery store, it is very key to observe which line to get in. You know, there's always that person that's like, sir, right here. I'm like, she has 93 items in her cart. Mm -mm. I have two hours. Well, I ended up making a massive mistake. And there was this one sweet lady, maybe 70, 75. She did have uh, the disposition of feisty. I could sense it. What I, she had the haircut. I could tell she's going to be feisty. And so I, I get in, I'm like, Fox, don't make eye contact. So I'm trying to put stuff up on the thing. And she like grabbed the little like separating divider and slammed it on the thing. And I was like, 
ooh, easy. Like, I wasn't expecting you to buy our stuff. And she is having a full-blown, loud argument with the cashier over a, true story, a 30-cent-off coupon. And it went from, like, just them to now everybody's like, oh, wow. And she's like, oh, I'm going to get mine. You better scan that. It did not scan. The lady's like, ma'am, it's not valid because I think it was from 1976. Like it was, <laughs> it had some age on it. And so I was like, ma'am, and I thought I was trying to be kind because you know, I preach about this. <laughs> I'm like, Fox, I've got three $1 bills in my pocket. We should bless this lady. I didn't realize that was going to ignite a fire. <laughs> I, d- I did not realize that it was about to escalate the situation to a whole nother level. And so I said, ma'am, I know you're, what's your name? And she was like, I didn't give you my name. I was like, right. Okay. So I said, <laughs> cashier had her name. So I said her name and I said, ma'am, I've got, this is random. I never carry cash like, like three $1 bills. I want to, I want to bless you with three $1 bills. That, that's, that's a, that's a big difference from the 30 cents. Right. And she said, why don't you mind your own business, Jackson? Just give me a nickname. The fox is like, my mom's name is Jackie. I'm like, that's not what she meant. So I'm like, all right, now we're going to fight. Like, but she was giving this lady just the most frustrated, over-the-top, anxiety-filled, angry. She headed out to the parking lot, and I'm, I'm telling the cashier, like, hey, this wasn't your fault. Everybody's dealing with something. Some of y'all are like, well, what happened? Why well, didn't go out in the parking lot? She was waiting for me. <laughs> she looked like she could whip me. Like she rolled up in her Lincoln town car, like you and me. I'm like, hey, see, here's the truth though. Authentic peace does not come from your surroundings. It doesn't come from what life can offer. It doesn't come from a 30 cent off coupon. A lot of times we look for peace in the wrong places. And then when we don't have it out of the overflow of our frustrations, we take it out on someone else. We lash out against someone else. Write this down. God's peace is not just a wishful idea. It's a guaranteed promise. Like we can receive this type of peace and we're all going to have a bad day. I don't know if we're going to have it to the level of a fist fight over a 30 cent off coupon. But I will say this piece that we're talking about this weekend and throughout this entire month, y'all, it's a guaranteed promise. How many of y'all like money back guarantees? Like you're big on that. You're like, I'll sign up. It's money back guarantee. Worst case, the steak tastes awful and I'll get it back. How many of y'all take advantage of the Costco refund guarantee? Some of y'all, your, your vacuum you bought in 1996. Like it's not vacuuming anymore. Costco will take it back. All right. I don't know if y'all knew that. They're like, have the best return policy ever. I just gave you pearls. That was worth the drive. God's peace is not just something that we're hoping will happen. It's a guaranteed promise. Philippians 4, 7 says, then you will experience what? God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. And then I love this part right here. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. What does that last line mean? It means in relationship. It means Christ-like. It means a Christian. It means you've given your life. You've surrendered your life to the Lord. Psalms 29 also reminds us in verse 11 that the Lord gives strength to his people. Say it again out loud. I'm his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Peace is a promise and a blessing that God wants to give to us as his Children, will you lift your hands open handed like this across every campus? Will you just close your eyes for just a moment and say this out loud? Uh, God, I receive the gift of peace that you offer me. Forgive me for trying to find it in other places. I receive your peace today in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Now, I'm going to step on some toes here for just a minute. Um, Some of you haven't been experiencing God's peace because it's hard to hear God's voice when you've already decided what you want him to say. So God, I need you to just confirm or not if she's the one. He's like, "Mm -mm." and you're like, are you sure? I feel like she might be. And then what ends up happening is we end up, uh, and I'm going to challenge you today. Some of you have had your foot wedged 
in that little spot when the door closes, you just put your foot in there. And God's been trying to close a door for your protection. And that redirection has been for your protection. And you're about to drag that mess into 2025. So just pull your foot out of that door today. Some of y'all been trying to kick doors open. Like, are you sure this isn't your will? Because the world says, hustle, grind until you make it, figure it out. And God's saying, do it in my time. If you want peace, do it in my pace. But the truth is, it's hard to hear God's voice. I'm going to say it again for those from my back row Baptist. It's hard to hear God's voice when you've already decided what you want him to say. To experience his peace, we have to know his voice. We have to know his voice. That's an every day in his presence, praying, worshiping, spending time in the word. I just need a sign, brother. No, you need to open the Bible. Everything you need is in the word, elbow the person next to you and say, that was for you. Elbow your second choice and say, I was praying for you. And the Lord said, he's been looking for you. <laughs> All right, another story. Story time. Okay, another story. I had, I, had uh, I think it was Finley and Daphne and Fox. It might have been Brecken, Daphne and Fox. It was three out of my four. And so uh, I did something. And when I start telling the story, you're like, I know Jackie wasn't with you. I decided I was going to stop and get McDonald's pancakes. Hence, I know Jackie wasn't with you. And so the kids were like, Dad, it can't, how bad can it be? I was like, I don't know. So I stopped at McDonald's to get them pancakes. And I clearly ordered three individual hot cake meals. And then I said, hey, we don't need all the, the syrup. Now, who calls it syrup? All you fancy people. Okay. Who calls it syrup? I sip sipping on the scissor. Like, It's like the difference between vase and vase. Like, if you say vase, you're in a different tax bracket. Like, I heard a guy once say, if one more person calls a vase a vase, I'm gonna punch him in the foss. Okay. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So I said, I don't need the syrup. Come on, y'all. Syrup is fine for you fancy people. I said, we don't need the butter, we just need the hotcakes. The guy said, I got no problem. I was like, good Lord. So I pull up, and then they hand me, I pay. Uh, and I did the apple pie, and it's done super quick. And so I pull up, and the little window opens, and they like yeah, they need the WD forty this thing because it was like. Gang, gang, gang. I said okay, and I and they handed me a bag. I said thank you, and gang, gang, gang. the window shut, and they only gave me one order. I said okay. I said there's just one order, and Fox is in the back like, but I want pancakes. I'm like, I get it. Just take it easy and don't tell your mom about this. <laughs> So window opens. It's a different person. The lady goes, um, sir, you got to move forward. I said, no, I, I'm aware. I ordered three orders, three orders of hotcakes, and I only got one. And she goes, yeah, he said you only ordered one. And I said, yeah, but I ordered three. Window shut. <laughs> so I waited. Window opens about 30 seconds later. And this is this guy. He's like, I said, hey, man. He's like, yeah, you got to move up. I'm like, yeah, I got, I got it. I ordered three orders of hotcakes, and you guys gave me one. He goes, yeah, but you only paid for one. I said, yeah, it, it's, I still don't think it was my fault. I ordered yeah, yeah, window shut. <laughs> so my, my piece is being tested in this moment. <laughs> How many of your pieces being tested a little bit? I'm like, like I'm sanctified, but yeah, 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 open that window up. <laughs> you better open the window. So the window opens. They hand me two bags. I'm like, thank you. Y'all, it is a bag overflowing with butter and syrup. I didn't order that. I got all this extra butter and syrup. What am I supposed to do with this? So I'm like, Fox, just drink these. Like, so finally it opens up again. And she's like, I'm so sorry, sorry sir. That has, that is, that's our mistake. You did order three orders, and you paid for it. I said, that's right, Janet. That was her name. And I said, a real like, Janet. And she was like, well, I'm sorry. And I said, well, just so you know, you ended up in a preaching sermon story. And window up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just, I'm just kidding. I was actually really kind. It's fine, though. My peace was being <laughs> tested. Why are you telling us that story? Because sometimes life feels like a never 
ending drive through frustration. It's frustrating, it's confusing, it's loud, and the window just keeps closing on you. And you're like, God, when, when is it going to be my time? When am I going to move from broken to breakthrough like the bearded wonder preaches all the time? When am I going to really experience that type of peace? I'm telling you, today's a great day to get ready to receive the gift of peace from the Lord. Because watch this. Jesus himself never promised us a life without struggles. We, there's a misconception that says, well, I'm a Christian now. Thank God I don't have to deal with any of that stuff. It's like, no, no, no. There's a bullseye on your back now. Like, you're going to deal with persecution. Have you read <laughs> the stories about the disciples' life? Have you ever read what missionaries go through in third world countries when they're going to preach the gospel? Sometimes we don't show up to serve because we're like, but is there air conditioning? But do I have to be there long? <laughs> Will they feed me? No, Jesus never promised a life without struggles, but he did promise to be with us in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the struggle. I'll give you an example. In Matthew 14, Peter, the only other documented man in the Bible to literally walk on water. It was a beautiful story. Jesus is out there on the water like this. Like, what's up, disciples? And they're like, is that, who is that? Is that a ghost? And Peter's like, nah, y'all, that's Jesus. And he's out on the water now. Just, I mean, walking on the water. Like, this whole story is wild. But it wasn't until he got distracted. He lost focus. The problem is we start focusing on our diagnosis more than Jesus. We start focusing more on our lack instead of the promise keeper. We start looking more at what is not going right instead of, God, you've been so kind to me in these areas until Peter lost focus. He was walking on the water. Here's the lesson that we can learn. When we panic and we look at our problems and we lose focus, we end up losing our peace. This isn't rocket science, rocket surgery. I always mess that up. This isn't science surgery. What? That's not right. This isn't rocket science. Y'all, when you lose your, how many of y'all have lost focus before? You've gotten distracted. Now, at the same time, how many of y'all lost your peace in the middle of it? Because when you get distracted, you end up blowing wherever the wind takes you. But when you fix your eyes on Jesus, you'll experience this gift. I've been teaching our kids this. You'll experience a gift of peace from him in the midst of the chaos, in the midst, the midst of the uncertainty, in the midst of the madness. All right, here's a, here's a couple of truths I want to give you about peace. And this one isn't so deep theologically, but here it is. Right here. Peace is found in surrender. As simple yet loaded. Peace is found in surrender. He'll never force his peace on your life. He'll never force his presence on your life. No, it is found in the posture of surrender. Now I'm going to do a loaded question here. Let's be honest. How many of y'all are control freaks? Come on, wave at me. Some of y'all are like, you're not going to control me. <laughs> I'll lift my hand because I asked last service. I said, am I a little bit of a control freak? And Jack in the front row was like, eh. so, okay, I'll lift my hand too. How many of y'all are a little bit of a control freak? Come on. It's okay. All right, 17 of you. I'm going to do an altar call for liars at the end. We, we think in our own strength that we can organize and control everything. And once I organize and once I control everything, then Pastor Daniel, peace will follow. But what ends up happening is we assume things are safer in our hands than in his. You know, I watched this this documentary, and I, I read this study around people that serve, show up, give, tithe. They believe in the house of God. Majority of the time when people don't, it's because they don't fully trust that it will go where they thought it would, where they said it would, and they assume that it's their money anyways, their gift anyways. And by, by, just so y'all know, the gift that God gave you is not your gift. That's the problem with your act of serving. Well, I'm not going to serve. Yeah, because you assume your gift belongs to you. Your gift is actually from God to give away. It's something that God wants to overflow out of. You're, somebody say, I'm gifted. Come on. Even if you don't believe it, say it. I'm gifted. 
But tithing and giving and showing up and serving and wrapping presents for 10,000 kids, it's not beneath any of us. Now, they, you can clap, it's okay. I feel like somebody should have. But when you're overloaded with, no, I gotta organize and control all this, and this is safer in my hands, it robs you of your peace. So we have to give God all of our worries. We have to surrender everything. Because here's the truth. I need somebody to grab this. Surrendering control doesn't make you weak. It actually makes you strong in him. It makes you stronger in him. And then ultimately, he's strong in you. James 4.8, this is a directive. Draw near to God. It doesn't say you might want to. Here's a good suggestion. No, it says draw near to God. And what happens? And he will draw near to God. You. Peace comes when you let go, draw closer to God, and let him take care of the things that you can't control. But let me say this real quick, because there is one thing that you can control. You can control how you respond to things that are sent to destroy your peace. You don't have to respond to every text message they send you. You don't have to get all puffed up over every comment you see on social. You don't have to get all bent out of shape when someone is committed to misunderstanding you. The thing that you can control is the things that are sent to destroy your peace. And by the way, there's a real enemy who really doesn't like you, who really wants to rob you of your peace. But how many of y'all know the gift of peace that you have received from God? If you'll guard it and allow him to guard your heart and your mind, I'm telling you, the best of your days are the rest of your days. I feel it. Am I preaching okay? They're not responding as strong as I'm preaching. Okay, no. It's ridiculous, but thank you. Okay, my peace is non-negotiable. That's been something we've been saying all year long. Now I'm gonna guard my peace. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm gonna guard my peace. Some of y'all are holding on to your gun. You're not supposed to have that in here. Look at your second choice and say, my peace is non-negotiable, come on. All right, sticking to relinquishing control for just a minute. Uh, Jackie and I were on a trip, and I, I decided to get um, a rental car. And the GPS, I don't know, it couldn't figure out where we were. So it kept recalculating, re recalculating, recalculating. And I finally was like, I'm smarter than this thing. I know kind of where I'm at. So I'm just driving. We're about 30 minutes driving, literally. We're in the middle of nowhere. And Jackie's like, are you sure this is the way? And I was like... Of course. You're not my co-pilot. Jesus is my co-pilot. I didn't say that. He should be the pilot, by the way. That t-shirt's ridiculous. Plot twist. I had no idea where I was at. Like, and we were literally lost. But sometimes we control life like that. We ignore God's redirection. No, stay away from her. No, stay away from him. No, that's not the right decision. No, don't get into business with them. No, that's not what I had for you. And God is trying to redirect us for our protection because we think we know better, but true peace will come when we again let go and allow him to lead, which is why it's so essential, y'all. I'm gonna go back to this, to read the word of God every single day. Get in his word, just read through. Read through a proverb every day. And, and by the way, if you're brand new to the Bible, every single day you can read, it's 31 Proverbs, you can read through. So today would be the first. So you start in Proverbs 1. Read through that. Then read a little bit through the Psalm. Then go through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then just dive in every day. It's essential. Why? Because Psalms 119 says that God's Word, God's Word is a lamp unto our feet, not a flashlight. It's a lamp. It illuminates where your next step is. It doesn't throw light on the entire path. You know why? Because He knows in our humanity we'll mess it up. We'll mess it up. He'll give you direction without all the details. So God's word is like a lamp unto my feet. It is a light unto my path, but it's not a flashlight. It, he'll never give us a life, I preached this for a long time, where he's not necessary. So if you want peace, you better trust him. Come on, somebody, say, you better trust him. So it's, this is why we have to be faithful where we are, currently what we have, and then eventually he'll light up the path and give you the next step. Okay, number two. Gratitude. I talked about the impact of gratitude last week. Gratitude is the path to peace. Gratitude ultimately shifts our perspective and keeps our focus on what he has done, 
Not on everything that's not working out exactly like we were hoping. I heard a friend of mine say this once. He said, God has never stopped being good. At times, we've just stopped being grateful. The goodness of God has never stopped, but if we get that twisted, we'll start saying, okay, God, I thought you were good. I, I thought you were good, God. And he's like, do you see everything I've given you? Do you see that in you, in me, uh, you live, you move, and you breathe? Do you see that you woke up again today? Do you see that I've given you another day to make a, a, a difference? God has not stopped being good. We sometimes stop being grateful. But when we pause and we start thanking God for the blessings and all that he's done, y'all, a guarantee, according to the word, is peace will follow. Colossians 3.15 Says, says it this way, let the peace of Christ, the inner calm, I love the Amplified, of one who walks daily with him. Come on, say it loud, I walk daily with him. Let it be the controlling factor in your hearts, deciding and settling questions that arise. To this peace indeed, you, you are called as members in one body of believers. Be thankful to God always. How many of y'all took me up last week on the gratitude challenge? All right, for those of you who are, uh, you know, once every six weeks saints, uh, I'll give it again. The gratitude challenge is this. We ask for y'all to write down three things that you're thankful for. One that moves you. Like I, I can't look over, over towards her because if I start talking about Jackie, I start crying. That's one that moves me. All my dreams came true when I married her. I, I, I'm, I, I mean it. I told my Finley last night, we were walking outside. I said, all my dreams came true when I married your mom. And then, and then the secondary dreams all came true when, when, when we had you guys, all four of you. And then Bella, the golden doodle with the underbite. She, <laughs> she's somewhere in there too. The second thing I want you to write down, I, I said this last week, is I want you to write something down that moves and affects somebody else. Maybe pick up the phone and just call your mama. She's still around. Call somebody a friend that moves or affects someone else. And then the third one, real lighthearted. I, I'm glad I got gas. It might be a quarter, ten, no, I didn't mean the other gas. I'm talking about in your car. It's disgusting. Only in this service, you guys need to pray. I'm glad I got a little bit of gas in my car. It might be a quarter a tank, but I'm grateful. He got me here and he'll get me home. Three things, and then I want you to go and tell somebody that you know it's a trusted voice in your life, what those three things are. And I'm telling you, peace will follow and it will change your perspective because gratitude invites God's peace into your situation. Write these down really quick. Here's a few practical ways to walk and receive the gift of peace from God. Number one, we have to choose to prioritize his presence. Every single day, when life feels overwhelming, I wanna encourage you, go to God first. Go to God first. Talk to him about what's troubling you. And by the way, he can handle your frustrations. He can handle your frustrations. God, you know I'm frustrated with this. He can handle that. Philippians 4, 6 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has already done. Number two, we have to choose to stay connected. Y'all, we have to pursue community. That's why we are so passionate about H HC groups. Get in a group. Don't disconnect. Don't forsake the gathering of brethren. I read this study the other day that said when a person gets away long enough, isolated, six weeks is the cutoff. Well, I haven't been to church in a while. How long? Because you start losing connection and you think that you can figure it out on your own. Well, brother, I can read my own Bible. I don't need to be around people that bother me. No, no, no. The Bible is very clear about the importance of gathering. Peace thrives in community. Surround yourself with people who will encourage you and will pray for you, and you can pray for them because God's peace, I know this firsthand in our lives, our marriage, our family, God's peace often comes through, the, through people that he places in our lives. I don't know how many times, I remember, and I'm, I'm out of time, but I'm gonna say this real quick. I remember when we had a miscarriage. It was devastating. Some of y'all know this story. And I went to preach a couple months later. And this older lady, thank God for older ladies that are seasoned in their faith. Not the lady that tried to fight me at H-E-B. It was not her. This lady walks by me. She doesn't know me. She said, hey, 
I feel like the Lord told me to tell you something. I get a little leery about that. You ever met that person that's like, I had a dream? You're eating a huge Subway sandwich. You're like, I was not, I wasn't me in that dream. Was it gluten free bread? <laughs> okay, proceed. Keep going. Tell me more. It's a cold cut combo. I was like, huh? okay, maybe it was. Maybe it was. She said, hey, I want to tell you something. The Lord said it won't happen a second time. You're going to call your wife. I don't even know what this is. But he's about to give you guys peace and fear is about to leave your family. I called her and when I told her, we had an overwhelming sense of peace. I'm grateful that God's peace oftentimes will come through the people that he sends along your path. You know, we tried again and we had our fox man. And if we wouldn't, I'm telling you, there were so many moments, domino effect moments that lined up the voice of God in that moment because we were so heartbroken. It was hard to hear the voice of God. How many of y'all have ever been in that place where maybe your peace is broken into pieces? So I want to encourage you, do not stay away, but choose to stay connected. Number three, we have to choose to focus on what really matters. Y'all, we're really good, especially in Americanized culture, we're really good about sweating the small stuff. Now we have, to, we have to fix our eyes on Jesus, who, by the way, is the author, finisher, and perfecter of our faith. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Yeah, you can clap. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Would you close your eyes just for a moment? God, I thank you that as we align our hearts, we align our hearts our minds and our thoughts. God, we want to fix them on you. Jesus, today, I thank you for your presence. I thank you that you're the way maker. You are the miracle worker. You are the promise keeper. You're the peace giver. There's a lot of folks that need peace today, especially during this season. God, we need peace. Would you stand your feet and look at me really quickly? Here's my ask. Here's my question for everyone. Is your peace, is your peace currently in pieces? I said this a couple weeks ago, that a lot of times we end up coming into Hope City, we end up kind of floating in here on broken pieces. Throw that up on the screen, y'all. Is your peace, I need them to see it. Is your peace in pieces? Do you feel like your life is fragmented? Do you feel like you're barely staying back together? Do you feel like you're just like, Pastor Daniel, it's a miracle I even walked in here today. If your peace is in pieces, would you just lift up your hand? I'm looking all over the room. I see you. Thank you for your transparency. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can you lift your hands, everybody in the room? Let's join our friends who said, hey, today, I feel a little bit fragmented. Life's not about those staccato notes short-lived, flickering, fleeting moments. God, today I pray, Holy Spirit, I pray that you release a sustaining peace over every daughter, every son, every husband, every wife, every brother, every sister, every future husband, every future wife, every future mom, future dad. God, I pray right now that you release your peace. Release it now. Release it now. At Katie, release it now. At the woodlands. Release it now in additional seating. Release it now over this room and everybody watching online. And come on, let's just receive that gift. You can just Come on, one more time. You've been just that good. Your good. Every me. day of my life, you've been just that good. So good to me. Lord, without your love, where would I be? Oh, my God. Oh, my God, you sure Time, one more time. You've been just like you. So good. So good to me. You've been just like you. So good. So good to me. Lord, without your love, where I be? Oh, my God, you sure been good to 
Come on, if you receive that peace today, will you give him praise? God, we receive that. We receive that. And we thank you that you can get us to our destination into your presence on broken pieces. And we are grateful. If you're here today, everybody looking at me really quickly, two opportunities. Pastor Daniel, the reason I haven't had peace is because I don't know the peace giver. You're talking about Jesus and I want to know him. Here's what we believe at Hope City. According to the Bible, not our opinion, according to the Bible in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, it says, when we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved, set free, healed, and delivered. He'll write victory in your story. The second invitation is, Pastor Daniel, I've given my life to the Lord, but my peace is in pieces. My life has felt like those staccato notes you were talking about. I've got these flickering, short-lived moments because I've been living reckless. I've been caught up in the prodigal life. I've been trying to carve my own path. I've been trying to do it in my own strength. And the truth is, I have no peace because I don't walk with Him. I have no peace because I'm not in sync with His pace. And I want to rededicate my life today, again, here at Hope City. Now with every eye closed, those watching online, look at me real quick online. If you are hearing my words and you would say, Pastor Daniel, I need to know Jesus as my Savior for the first time or I want to rededicate. Wherever you're watching around the world or the nation, maybe you stumbled upon this thing in your algorithm. I want you to type yes to Jesus right there and our team will help you. And you can also pray along to this prayer in just a moment. But one, everybody else in all the rooms, every campus. Two, I want to give my life to Jesus, rededicate my life. Three, if that's you, would you boldly lift up your hand? I want to pray for you. I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. I saw you, I saw you, I see you. I see you, I saw you and you and you and you. And I saw you and you and you. And I saw you and you and I saw you back here. Come on, Hope City, can we give God praise? That's just the West Houston. All right, I want everybody including our Hope City worship team, dream team, staff, everybody, and everybody else in the room. Would you pray this prayer to join with every person that lifted up their hand and everybody watching online? Pray this prayer out loud. Jesus, here's all my sin. Here's all my shame. Here's all my struggles. I repent for all my issues, and I'm grateful for your forgiveness. Jesus, thank you for coming to this earth, yourself, bringing my life peace my life hope and my life freedom by hanging on that cross and giving up your life for mine. But then on the third day, you got up out of the grave so that I could live a life full of hope, full of freedom, and full of peace. From this moment on, I'm choosing you as my Father, my Savior, and my Lord in Jesus' name. Come on, Hope City, go wild. Heaven is. Come on, let's give God praise.